Hello, geometry students. This is Mr. Gehrig. Um, welcome to geometry in the first lesson of the year. Uh, so first thing, is your sound on? All right. If it's not, get it turned on. Okay. Make sure you're paying attention. All right. I'm not asking you to necessarily understand everything I'm saying here. That's what tomorrow is for us to fill in the gaps, but you should be paying attention and doing your best to understand as much as you can, All right? It's gonna do you good in the long run. So today we're doing points, lines, and planes, which you're gonna see and hopefully learn, learning targets here. I can name and define a point, a line, and a plane using standard geometric representations. I can identify and name the intersection of specific points, lines, and planes. Okay, so we're gonna spend a couple of days on this lesson because this is kind of the foundation for the not only the unit, but really we use this stuff all year, all right? So this beginning is a little weird. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, if you don't understand this, it's okay. What you really understand is, um, what you wanna understand is from here down, okay? But a definition, you've heard that word before. A definition is not exactly what you've always understood it to mean at least in the mathematical world. For mathematicians, and for us this year, a good definition has to have a few characteristics. It has to use clearly understood terms. Okay. Uh, the words should be commonly understood or already have a definition from a previous unit or maybe a previous math class. Okay. Second thing is it should be precise. There are some words that are not precise, such as large. What does large mean? Large in what sense? Sort of or some, okay? Um, third thing, it is not disproved. All right. And we'll talk more about that in later lessons and units, okay? So just to kind of give you an example, define the following words. This is almost impossible to do right now. So truck and dog, two, two words you know of, right? When, you, when I say truck, you have a picture in your mind, right? But if you try to define it, say a vehicle with four wheels, well, that could be a car, that could be a van, that could be a lot of different things. Um, so you have to get um, very specific to differentiate a truck from another vehicle, okay? And same kind of thing with a dog. A dog is an a mammal with four legs. Well, there's lots of mammals with four legs. What differentiates a dog from everything else? Okay. We're not gonna, I'm not giving you a definition. All right, I'm just trying to explain why a definition is a little bit trickier when, we come, when it comes to math. All right, so in geometry, we have a few undefined words or terms. So technically these next things do not have a definition. They are classified this way because to define these words, you need to use words that need further defining, All right? So therefore we, the following are not definitions, okay? But rather general descriptions of their meanings, All right? And the first one is a point. What is a point? A point is a location in space. It has no size. It's hard to wrap your mind around that. It has no size. It is represented by a small dot and named using, and this is important, one uppercase letter. All right, so all of the naming conventions, we're gonna use them throughout and you're gonna be expected to understand what one uppercase letter means and more coming up, okay? Second one is a line. Now, when, you, when I say line, most of you are probably thinking of a line segment, but a line is a series of points. So it's made up of a bunch of things from the previous description, extending in two opposite ways without end, okay? A line is named by any two points on the line or a single lowercase letter. That lowercase letter is typically italicized 
But if I use one letter and I say it's lowercase, then I'm talking about a line. If I use an uppercase letter, remember, I'm talking about a point. So it is important, the case on these. All right, so here's an example. Got a, a line there. Um, and the arrows going left and right are showing that it extends forever. Name that line in four different ways. Well, we, uh, we had two ways to name a line. You could use two points, any two points on the line, or you could use one lowercase letter. Now, you can't change a P, like point P. You can't change that to lowercase and say it's, it's line P. You can't do that. If you are going to use the second way of naming, it's going to have to be out to the side, and you're going to notice that it's already lowercase. So oh, that's the first way, is line M. A lot of times, you don't have that lowercase letter. Sometimes you have to use the second way to name it, and that's any two points on the line. So I could say PT, and you'd want the symbol above it. You could say TW, use the symbol above it. Or you could say PW. There's the symbol above it. Now, what happens if I reduce, reverse the order of the points? It's not a new way to name the line. So if I said TP, that's the same as PT. So if I say name this line in two different ways and you say PT and TP, I'm gonna say, well, that's only one, okay? And just like TW, I could say WT, you get the point, right? So WP here. In the above example, we say that points P, T, and W are collinear, which means they lie on the same line, right? P, T, W, all on line M, therefore they are collinear. We're gonna do some work with that on the back. So here we go to the back. So now you got a drawing with multiple lines, okay? It says, are E, F, and C collinear? So are they on the same line? So look at E which there's no dot, but we can understand it to be where they intersect. And C, same thing. And this point here would be D, All right? Are E, F, and C collinear? Yes, they are. Which line do they lie on? Well, which line are all three of those on? It would be line M. Are C, D, and P collinear? So if I look at C, D, and P, are those all on the same line? No, they are not. What line do they lie on? Well, they don't lie on the same line, so I can't answer that question. Now, this one is tricky. Please pay attention to this one. Are P and C collinear? Well, you look at P and you look at C and you're like, there's no line that they both lie on. But the answer to this question is yes. Okay. And I'm going to talk about that right here below. Question three, so what we just talked about, represents our first postulate or axiom. Those are two words that mean very similar things. And for us, they mean the same thing, which is just an accepted statement of fact. So we're going to sit, accept these next two bold statements, right? They're in, written in bold. They're not bold, but we're going to accept these as fact. The postulate says, the one that I'm talking about here, says that through any two points, there is exactly one line. Let me put it in layman's terms. If you have two points, you could draw a line through them, no matter what. I don't care where they're at. You could draw a line through any two points. So if I say are two points collinear, your answer is always yes. The second postulate says that if two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one Point. So the intersection of two lines is a point. Okay, and you can see that up there in the picture. We're going to erase all this, but I'm going to show you on the picture where lines N and M meet is point C. And where lines L and N meet, that's point D. Right? When two lines intersect, they intersect at a point. All right. Now, moving down. We have a third undefined term. If you paid attention to the learning target, you saw this. And that is a plane. Didn't write that very well. Try that again. Which is a flat surface, which actually has no thickness. 
okay? It is named by at least, notice I say at least three non-collinear. They have to be non-collinear, okay? That's the most typical way we name them. It can be named by a single uppercase letter. I try to avoid this because that can get confusing when it comes to that versus a point. Um, but I will show you in the next example that naming convention. So you got this quadrilateral here, which is representing a plane. Remember, a plane doesn't end though at those lines. A plane goes on forever in all for two-dimensional locations. It does not come off the page at you, but it goes on forever in all directions. Name the plane shown below three different ways. Now, the one that we won't use very often, but you technically could use is Q. Looks like a point, right? But there's no point that a Q is attached to. You can probably see where that gets a little confusing. I don't like that method of naming, but it is a method. You can't just pick any of those points on there and say plane A. That doesn't make any sense because A is a point, okay? Now, two other ways. I'll just give you two other ways. I'll say A, D, B. Or I'll say um, D, B, C. What about, and there's lots more. I could probably go, I, I don't know how many I could do, but I could do several more, all right? One of them that we cannot use is ABC. If I said ABC for the plane, that's wrong. Why? Because those are collinear points. A, B, and C are collinear. And if they're collinear, it doesn't meet the description that we need up here that I had on the notes previously, okay? They have to be three non-collinear points, all right? We say that line that the line and point D are coplanar. So just like collinear, we have coplanar. If something is coplanar, that means it lies on the same plane. So point D lies on the same plane as line AB. Okay. Uh, there's two more postulates. The third postulate says that if two planes intersect, notice it says if. They don't always intersect, but if they do, then they intersect in exactly one line. The intersection is a line. The final postulate today says that through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane. So if I have three points that are not on the same plane, it makes a plane. Or sorry, three points that are not on the same line, then they make a plane. All right, and that one's going to come up. We'll ask you about that one in the last example here. The last example is going to, you're going to get very used to these types of questions. Name the plane representing the top of the box. So the top of the box would be right there, right? So how many letters do I need? I need three non-collinear. So I could stop at E, F, G. Now notice it says at least three, right? And back when I talked about the naming, at least three. I could just be safe and say E, F, G, H. That's fine. You don't have to. You can stop at three, any three. So I could say EFH, I could say HFG, any three that are all on the top of the box. Okay. What is the intersection of GH and CG? So GH is here and CG is there. Where do those two intersect? At point G. Um, one thing I, I do like to show people, you see how G is in both lines? It means it's where they intersect. I'm going to clear all that. What is the fourth point in BFH? So B, F, and H. Now, a lot of people try to draw a line and like, like what, what's going on here? I don't really understand that. Don't draw that line. Look at what plane has all three points on it. B, F, and H are all on the front. So what I'm naming is the front plane. What's the only point that I didn't put on there? Point A, right? That also is on the front, okay? 
Number four, what is the intersection of EDA and CAB? Now, this is where people have trouble. EDA and CAB, okay? EDA, let's identify which part of the box I'm talking about. So E, D, A. I'm talking about the left side of the box, okay? And CAB would be, I'll use a different color, C, A, B. I'm talking about the bottom of the box. So where does the bottom meet the left? Well, the bottom meets the left at the bottom left edge. Remember, two planes are intersecting. If two planes intersect, they intersect at a line, which means I need two points where they intersect, or two points to name the line where they intersect. And those two points here are AD, so line AD, okay? Now I'm gonna show you another way to do that. Let me erase all that and I'm gonna show you a different way. So EDA, what's the fourth point that I didn't name? It would be F, right? I'm gonna make sure I fill in and name the fourth point. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom, the last one, CAB. That's the bottom. What's the fourth point on the bottom? D. I'm gonna write that. Which letters are in both of those? AD and AD. You can also see it when I have the circles on the picture. A and D both have a blue and a red circle, which means that's the intersection. Okay. All right, what is the intersection of EG and CDG? Now, this is a line and a plane. We don't have a postulate for that. You'll see why here when I do five and six, All right? What is the intersection of EG? So EG is a line. So all I'm talking about here is that line, that's it. And the plane CDG, so C, D, G. I'm talking about the back of the plane, of the box. What's the fourth point? That'd be point E. What has the blue and the red circle? Well, it's GE, right? I'm going to erase stuff on the box, leaving the answer there because I'm going to show you number six, GH and FAB. So GH and FAB. So change colors, FAB. What's the last point in that point plane? H. What has a blue and a red circle? Only point H. And this right here is why you don't have a postulate for a line and a plane, because if you have a line and a plane that intersect, it could intersect at a line or it could intersect at a point. It's not an always. Since it's not an always, we can't say it's a postulate. Okay. Last thing, takes a little visual spatial here. What is the fourth point in E, D, B? So E, D, and B. You're like, well, that doesn't make a plane. Well, any three non-collinear points, which is what we have here, makes a plane. And there's always gonna be a fourth point in a plane, right? So what is it? Well, do you see how ED form a vertical line this way? What forms a vertical line with B? The H. So point H is the fourth point. Let me draw this box in. If I'm a, it's kind of a plane going across the middle. And that's a plane. I know it's a long video, normally they're not this long, but that's lesson one.